I tell you what, never in my life have I been more excited to be involved in another organization other than Rap and Rowdy Girl. Uh, you know, we've been together now for, gosh, four years. And I remember Connie, uh, and I just want to welcome you, by the way. I, I just am so excited to have you here with us. How in the world did you make such a big leap into the good old boy politics of Big Ag from being a vegan bat girl? Well, I mean, so being a vegan bat girl with the Batman light was one of the most fun time periods of my life. And honestly, if I could replicate myself, I would still be doing that all night long. And, you know, <laughs> having conversations with police where first they're trying to like rip me out of there and then they're turning vegan by the end of the conversation. And so um, I would still be doing that. I think the thing that ends up happening is that I had this reality check when I, some of us who have been vegan for a long time and are tracking numbers, we realized that the numbers are sort of not making sense. And so I went really deep under the hood and started looking at the data over the years and all of the bailouts and all of the subsidies that supported the industry. And I realized that actually it was designed to be fail proof. And it and it's not a new concept. I mean, dairy has been a fixed price system since 1949. And our issue in the movement was we focused so much on one revenue stream which was consumer dollars. And we forgot about our tax dollars. And that is a giant revenue stream. And we need to have our voices attached just as persistently and detailed with our tax dollars as we do with our consumer dollars. And so when that sort of, it was like a moment where I was like, oh my gosh, the Batman light only works on one side of the, the aisle. So the good old boys this this country, you know, as we know it from the United States standpoint, standpoint and not the land, was actually created to be an agrarian society. I mean, Thomas Jefferson is the founder of agriculture, and the idea was that agriculture people would always stay in power of this country. The problem is, is that the good old boys only attach their power to the livestock and dairy industry and are leaving out plant-based growers and plant-based consumers. So on my end, it is to channel our voices into Congress. And it's not just an agriculture thing. Consumers and our, the public are not being represented in Congress because we're not lobbying. And so therefore, um, no matter what it is, what are, whatever social justice movement or thing that you want, you need to understand that most lobbyists are in there speaking about the, the corporation or the producer, and we need to elevate our voices as we're the taxpayer, the, we're the consumer, right? So that's why I had that huge transition. It was a duty. It wasn't because I wanted to be in politics, by the way. I know, right? I know you didn't. I mean, I've watched you as a friend and a business associate. I mean, you transitioned. I've watched completely you transition transitioned. 